Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel. Hope all is well. We're going to bring you some Legends of Boxing PC game. Four fight extravaganza main event. Julio Cesar Chavez will defend his world lightweight title. 15 rounds against Manos de Piedra, Roberto Duran. Duran, the former welterweight champion in our, in our universe, lost to Nino LaRocca, now gets a crack at the lightweight championship. Co-main event, Pepino Cuevas takes on Oscar De La Hoya, 10 rounds welterweights. Salvador Sanchez versus Alexis Arguello, 10 rounds featherweights. To start us off, the big men. Jess Willard, former heavyweight champion, against Eric Butterbean Esh, 10 rounds heavyweights. Fight time is here. If you enjoy the channel and the content, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for notification when we are on. Thank you. Joining us ringside here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, Steeler fan 1933, our good friend Matt. Hope all is well. So our first bout of the evening, heavyweights, Jess Willard, Eric Butterbean Esch. Both coming off draws, both trying to rebound and get their careers back on track. Jess Willard is 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Let's go to the, the preview here. Willard beat Marvis Frazier via knockout in the ninth. Lost to Sonny Liston via TKO in the 8th, and in his last bout was held to a surprising draw against the Italian Lorenzo Zanone. Eric Butterbean Esch, no wins, one loss, one draw. Lost a close decision to Marvis Frazier. Blew a fight with Jose Roman. He was ahead, but Roman caught Butterbean Esch coming in. In the last round, and that gave Jose Roman of Mexico the draw. Both fighters trying to get back in the win column, and actually, Butterbean, it'd be the first win for him in our universe. Jess Willard, Potawami, Kansas, the Giant. I'm pretty much sure I mispronounced that. 22-5-1 with 20 knockouts. Probably a plethora of no contests or unsanctioned bouts. Uh, Eric Butterbean Ash, J Jasper, Alabama, 77-10-4 and four with 58 knockouts. Remember, the king of the four-rounders. But this is going 10 rounds heavyweights. Willard with 6 power. Ash with 8 power. But that will drop after 2 rounds. Minus four after two rounds, it'll drop to four. The stamina edge will go to J uh, Jess Willard. As Eric better be Nash, he's got to look to get him early. Willard's a tough fellow, but Eric better be Nash will try to do what Jack Dempsey did to the Giant. Jess Willard likes to use uh, stay at distance, put the left hand out there. Try to grab you and hit you with that uppercut if you get in close, and he'll also throw the right cross. Butterbean Ash wants to get inside, bang away with hooks and uppercuts. Ring center we go at the Alamo Dome, San Antonio, Texas. First bout of the evening, 10 rounds, heavyweights. Willard in the red corner, Butterbean in the blue corner. They've gotten their final instructions. They touch gloves, they go back, they await the bell. Oh, also, let me just actually save this for a second. Also, we're going with some different options here. Uh, these are the first time we'll be showing you these optional rules. I rolled a couple of games offline. I rolled the dice physically to get a, a hang of these rules. We're going to use the knockdown uh, sever severity chart which I like, mode adjustments, controlled target number adjustments. We're not going to use the eight-sided die roll for defense. I'm not going to do that. And automatic 
plus punch if control roll is 20. So if the control roll is a 20, it doesn't matter what is rolled on defense. So these are the four optional rules we are now using in our universe. Back to the bout. We await the bell. Willard looks like he's going to bring the pressure. And Butterbean is actually going to try to catch Willard from uh, on the outside to counter. So that's a little change of uh, tactics by Butterbean. As the giant Jess Willard is going to go right at him. And you can see with this tactic of pressure... Jess Willard's control gets a lower number, which is better. It normally would have been a 9, but because it's pressure, it's minus 2, and that's one of the optional rules now that I'm using. Here we go, round number 1. The bell. Willard goes right at Butterbean. Butterbean looks to counter. Willard in control. Willard lands a grazing cross. Butterbean blinks, but there's no blood. Again, Jess Willard's able to get inside of the girthy Butterbean. Beautiful combination. Left, right to the head of Eric butterbean Ash, And that draws blood from the nose of the girthy one from Jasper, Alabama. A good start for Jess Willard. Jess Willard in complete control, pressuring Butterbean on the inside. Rips a left uppercut and a right uppercut. Butterbean looks to fire back. Hooks to the body, chopping right hand to the head. He's got to punch up against the uh, giant Jess Willard. Now they tie up. The referee breaks them. About a minute five to go here in round number one. Willard again on the inside trying to push Butterbean back. Let's his hands go. A three-punch salvo. Left, right, left. And Butterbean has a cut under the left eye to go with that bloody nose. Excellent start. For Jess Willard. Willard continues to punch. Butterbean tries to stay low. Willard throws a combination to the body and up to the head. Grazing shots as Butterbean does his best job to bob and weave. Again, Willard looks to land. He lands grazingly. Butterbean comes up and he lands a huge left hook. And Willard is hurt. Willard is hurt. The first serious punch, Eric Butterbean Ash throws, nails Jess Willard on the chin. Willard goes back to the ropes. Butterbean banging away with hooks to the body and up to the head. And Willard shoves him away. And there is the bell. So Butterbean rallied at the end, closing the gap. Did he steal the round with those big punches? Let's go to the unofficial ring score. In a moment. Endurance, 20 now for Willard, 15 for Butterbean. The ringside scorer gave it 10-9 to Jess Willard, the giant from Kansas. But it, it, you could see Butterbean stealing that round in the final 45 seconds. He really tagged Willard quite well, hurting him. And then landing another barrage when Willard was on the ropes, though Willard absorbed those punches much better. Round two, scheduled for 10. Willard on the outside. Butterbean on the inside. And you can see Butterbean gets the minus one now. So it's a 50. It's a nine versus a nine. So it's going to go off the higher dice roll. And it's Butterbean getting in there. Butterbean lands a left hook and a looping, chopping right hand, if you could call it that, as he's punching up on the jaw of Jess Willard. Butterbean again gets inside, works the body. Willard smothers him. Buddy, Butterbean with a two-handed attack there. Both fighters fainting, but not firing. And again, they jostle for position, but no punches thrown. Butterbean gets inside. That Willard jab is not an educated jab. He paws with it. Butterbean is easily able to work his way in, and he bangs the body very hard with a four-punch salvo. Left, right, left, right, into the ribs of the giant from Kansas, Jess Willard. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange ring center. An excellent round going for Butterbean. Butterbean wings a left and a right. Willard paws the punches away. Willard looking to come back. Butterbean coming in. Willard catches him with a right hand and a left to the body. Grazing shots. Willard again able to keep Butterbean at bay. And he lands that uppercut. It was a good right uppercut. Pawing jab. And as Butterbean came in at the bell, he grabs Butterbean around that girthy neck of his. And jam the right uppercut into the jaw. 
So Willard closes the gap at the end of round two, but we give that round to Eric Butterbean Esch, unofficially, of course. Let's see what the ringside scorer gives it. Butterbean's power after two rounds drops four, so it goes from an eight to a four. Ringside scorer has that round number two even. Round three, scheduled for ten. Willard on the inside gets an advantage. Butterbean on the inside gets an advantage. So Willard, 8-9. Lower number, the better for control. And it's Jess Willard banging away as Butterbean tries to smother him. Digs to the body and then a grazing uppercut. A right uppercut to the head of Eric Butterbean Ash. Butterbean comes back. Butterbean really working that body with hard hooks into the ribs on both sides of Jess Willard. Willard looks to retaliate. They're standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, ring center. Willard throws, doesn't land. Butterbean comes out of the crouch. Oh, left to the body, right hand, and a left hook to the jaw. Excellent combination by Butterbean. Butterbean continues to work on the inside. Another solid left to the body and a right uppercut, snapping the Giants' head. Willard looks to come back with a minute 23 left in the round. Willard digs the uppercut to the body and a chopping right hand to the side of Butterbean. Willard continues to punch. Same combination in tight. Left to the body. It's sort of a hybrid uppercut. And then the chopping right hand grazing Butterbean. They tie up. The referee separates them. Under 30 seconds to go here in round three. Both fighters fainting but not firing. And at the bell, they rally. Tremendous flurry at the bell. The referee has to jump between these behemoths. To stop the action. Good toe-to-toe -to -toe fl flurry. Even flurry. I give that round to Eric Butterbean Ash, though. Willard's stamina going down. Eric Butterbean Ash's stamina going down. Endurance for Willard, 14. For Ash, 9. Not at Will uh, Willard, very interesting strategy here. Let's see what he's going to do in the next round. Ringside score gives that round to Esh. They have it even. We have it one round more for Esh. First round Willard. Then we gave round two and three to Eric Butterbean Esh. Again, our scorecards are unofficial. Joining us at ringside with Steeler Fan 1933, Mark Jones, the trainer, friend, manager, and confidant of Primo Canera. Mark Jones with his observation from ringside. Says, Willard looks slow tonight. I'm in agreement with you, Mark. I am in agreement. Eric Butterbean Ash has been able to tag him quite well. Here we go. Round number four. Willard on the outside. Ash coming in. Ash gets the benefit on the inside of a minus one, so his control drops from a 10 to a 9. But it's Willard catching Ash coming forward, and he caught him. The pawing jab and a grazing right hand, but that stops Butterbean just for a moment. Enough for Willard to continue to punch. He wings a left and a right. Butterbean dips and dives his girthy body away from that. Willard lands a left uppercut and a right cross. Butterbean blinks, but there is no blood. Butterbean gets inside the Willard jab. Looping right hand. Catching the giant on the jaw, and then a left into the ribs of the Kansas giant. Willard comes back with a good cross left hook. Butterbean looks to exchange, and Butterbean digs to the body. He missed the shot to the head, and he came back with a 1-2 to the body. Always working that body, Butterbean is. We have under a minute to go here in round four. Willard lands a pawing jab and another pawing jab. No right hand. Willard, there's a good combination. Good combination. Butterbean just snorts and walks through it. Two jabs and a right hand. That was a good salvo. Scoring salvo landed by Willard. And Butterbean lands the looping right hand and then digs the left once again into the labanza of Jess Willard at the bell. A close round. Butterbean came on a little bit at the end, but I think we give that round to Willard. Again, our scorecard and the ringside scorecard is unofficial. Warren Chandler has joined us at ringside with Mark Jones and Steeler Fan 1933. Butterbean's endurance down to 5. Willard's endurance 12. Both fighters on the outside. Neither one has a benefit from the outside. 
Willard will have an advantage in control. He has the lower control number of a nine. Round five, scheduled for 10. It's Willard. Beautiful jab in a right hand. Nice scoring combination by Jess Willard. Butterbean faints. Willard moves forward, and Butterbean catches him with a 1-2 upon the schnoz. Willard looks to retaliate. Willard bangs away to the body, then up to the head. Four punches were thrown. Two of them got through. Willard continues to punch. He's got his length. He feigned the jab and landed the right hook to the side of Butterbean, and then a hybrid uppercut that was a grazing shot towards the top of Butterbean's cranium. Bean lets his hands go. Two jabs. When Butterbean wants to throw that jab, it is a good straight punch. A minute ten left here in round number five. Willard looking, looking, and now he lets his hands go. Again, Willard faints with the jab, then paws with it. Butterbean hesitated, and he was lost. He got tagged with a right cross. Willard again looks to punch, and a good combination by Willard. Willard dug a left and a right to the body, pushed Butterbean a little bit off balance as much as he could, and then landed another chopping right hand. 28 seconds to go here in round five. Willard having a good round. Butterbean comes back with a looping right hand and a left to the body. Butterbean again punches with under 10 seconds to go. Big combination by Butterbean closing the distance. As round five comes to an end, a rat attached shots by Butterbean. He windmilled four punches in there, two to the body, two to the head. Close round again. Willard's endurance goes down to 10. Butterbean's endurance goes down to two. He is laboring now. The king of the four rounders is now in round six. The unofficial ringside score has it even, 49-49. The ringside score has given three even rounds. Two, four, and five. Round one to Willard out of the red corner. Round three to Eric Butterbean Ash out of the blue corner. Here we go, round number six. In the Butterbean corner, they're saying, you're doing good, just let your hands go. The Willard corner wants the giant from kansas to be more active let's see who listens to their corner first round six scheduled for 10. good job by jess willard butterbean was trying to come in he wraps him up and he rips two right uppercuts right into the face of eric butterbean ash who has a slight cut near the left eye and a bloody nose Ash stays in tight, bangs the body, left and a right, into the ribs of Willard. Willard comes back! Big right uppercut, snapping the head of Eric Butterbean Ash. Ash was hurt by that one. Willard held him in place and ripped two uppercuts. The second one he really got into. You could see him spin those hips. Willard looking to follow up, and there's a three-punch salvo backing up. Ash for the moment. Ash moves forward, but it's Willard who's firing. Willard throws one jab, two jabs. Ash stays away from them. Now Ash advances forward. Ash gets underneath the jab of Willard, and he bangs that body with a 1-2-3 attack. The first punch was solid. The next two are grazing. Ash continues to stay on the inside. Overhand right catches Willard on the jaw, and then again the left into the ribs of the Kansas Giant. They tie up. Both men beginning to labor. Referees having trouble prying them apart. Final seconds here in round number six, and it's Eric Butterbean Ash! One, two, three! Left, right to the body, and a left uppercut to the jaw of Jess Willard, but he is punching up, and it takes away some of the power of the Butterbean. But we give that round to Eric Butterbean Ash. Again, Ash has rallied late in pretty much every round. Is it enough to steal the rounds? We shall see. Butterbean's power as he is exhausted down to a one. Defense was non-existent anyway. Willard's power is still a six. He is taking Eric Butterbean Ash into the deep waters. Will he drown him like he did Marvis Frazier? To the chat we go. Warren Chandler 
says, looking forward to the main event, though. I may be in bed by then, 1.15 a.m. here. This card would be one heck of a expensive pay-per-view, Warren Chandler says. And you get it absolutely free on the Al Red Sox fan YouTube channel. And if you're watching it later, all I ask is, every once in a while, let the ads run. As that helps out the channel. Mark Jones says, the ringside scorer has been seen chatting it up with the ring card girl. Each is about done. I, I agree to a point, Mark. I think Willard has more to him. But we'll find out here in round seven. There's the bell. Both fighters on the outside. It's Willard who's going to throw in. Willard lands a one-two combination. Again, the jab is more of a range finder. The right hand did land. A scoring punch, but didn't do any damage on Eric Butter B. Nash. Both fighters jockeying, fainting, but not firing. And there's a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Both fighters threw and threw hard. Grazing punches did land. Ash is going to be first here. He throws a jab in a right hand. The giant from Kansas parries both punches away. Ash continues to fire. This time he digs to that body. Willard's body does not move like his head, nor can he defend it like he can. Always leery, Willard, of the overhand right and left hook to the head. So Esch concentrates on banging the giant's body. Esch again. This time he fainted the jab to the body and then came over the top with the right hand. Esch scoring quite well here with 46 seconds to go in round seven. It's continually Eric Butterbean Esch. Again, he fainted to the jab, to the body. Willard is now concerned with those body blows and he comes with a looping right hand. To the head of Jess Willard. 25 seconds left in round seven. Beautiful combination. Again, the feint to the body, the right hook and left hook into the jaw of Jess Willard. But the power seems to be gone from Eric Butterbean Ash. Willard looking to retaliate as the bell rings. And there you go. Willard lands a 1-2 combination. Not much on it, but scoring blows. That was definitely a Eric Butterbean Ash round. He dug deep. The girthy one from Jasper, Alabama, dug deep and fought hard. We're approaching round eight. Let's go to the ringside score. Ringside score has it 68 68. Interesting. I did not give these even rounds. To Jess Willard, I gave the even rounds to Eric Esch. So I have Esch ahead by three. In the Willard corner, they want him to go at Esch. They feel that the girthy one from Jasper, Alabama is dead tired, and they are correct. In the Butterbean corner, they're telling Esch... If he comes at you, counter him. Stay on the outside. Here's the bell. Round eight. Willard swarms Ash. Willard throws. A barrage of punches. Left, right, left, right. Some of them get through. Butterbean blinking. And now he has some swelling to go with the left cut. Left eye. Underneath the left eye, he has swelling above it. The cut below it. And the blood continues to bleed. From the nose of Eric Butterbean Ash. Willard continues to fire, holding Ash in place and nailing him with two right uppercuts. It's all Jess Willard here. Chopping right hand, left hook to the body. Ash starts to retreat. Willard moves forward. Willard continues to punch. Right hand, left hook, right uppercut. Butterbean pushes Willard away. Tremendous chin on Eric Butterbean Ash. Both fighters faint but don't fire. Just over a minute to go here in round number eight. Willard looking to land, and he lands. Fainted the jab, right uppercut into the girthy midsection of Eric Butterbean Esch, and then a one-two to the head. Again, it's Willard holding Esch in place and nailing him with the right uppercut. Esch ties up Willard. Referee's having a difficult time. Now he's able to pull these bohemoths apart but it's Willard quickly jumping on Ash and again left uppercut right uppercut and Ash is hurt the girthy one goes into the ropes and the bell sounds to save Eric Butterbean Ash a huge ass kicking round 
for the Giant from Kansas, the former heavyweight champion Jess Willer, battering the girthy, rotundant Eric Butter Beanesh from Jasper, Alabama. He nearly knocked him back to Bama. Wow, a huge round. He did everything but knock Ash down. That could be a 10-8 round without the knockdown. Esh is exhausted in his corner. The doctor comes over to take a look. Esh and his cornermen say they're all right. Now the corner asks Eric, Butterbean Esh, do you want to continue? Again, he has that swelling above the left eye. The cut below the left eye. And the blood from the nose. He says, yes, I want to go through that uh, chopped up face. Cutter Historical has joined us here at ringside. Let's go to the ringside score. 10-8. I can see it. So the ringside score gave Jess Willard the round 10-8. Willard's up by two. I have Esh up by one. Again, I did not give even rounds in two, four, and five. I gave those rounds to Eric Butterbean Esh. I felt he stole them at the end. So I still have Esh up by one. Again, our scorecards are unofficial. Here we go for round number nine, the bell. And it's Eric Butterbean Esh fainting, now firing. He fainted to the body, and then he lands a left hook to the head, and then a right hand to the head. Two nice hooks, but the punch, the power from those punches is gone. Esh again throws. He's very tired. He throws three punches, misses them all. Willard countering, and again, it's the uppercut. Beautiful job by Jess Willard. He let Butterbean flail away, then stepped into him with a nice right uppercut and a left to the body. Both fighters throw and miss. 146 to go here in round number nine. Willard paused with the jab, but does not land. Both fighters fire again and miss. Butterbean loads up. Missed with the right hand, but lands the left uppercut. Grazing shot to the head of Willard. Butterbean continues to throw. Butterbean lands a grazing left and a right to the head. Willard looks to counter. Willard with a 1-2-3 to the face of Eric Butterbean Ash. And the cut has gotten worse under the left eye. Eric Butterbean Ash's face is a mess. Under 40 seconds ago here in round 9, Willard opening up. He feints the jab and then lands a right hook to the head of Esh. Willard continues to throw. Esh got underneath that combination and blocked the ones to the body. Good round. Well, you know, to me, it was Esh early, Willard late, but he chopped up Esh pretty good. I give that round to Jess Willard. So I have it even after nine. Round 10 could decide it. Round 10 could decide it. I have it even. The ringside scorer has it 88-85 Willard. Again, I gave rounds 2, 4, and 5 to Eric Butterbean Esh. I felt he stole them at the end. The ringside score gave rounds 2, 4, and 5 even. They touch glove. A girthy, swollen, and bleeding Eric Butterbean Ash grunts. The bell for round number 10. Both fighters on the outside. Willard lets his hands go. Two jabs, no right hand. Willard continues to punch. There's the jab and the right uppercut. Butterbean Ash not throwing anything. Round continues. Now... Esh looks to throw. Esh faints and wings an uppercut. It was a right uppercut and then the left hook to the head. Willard blinks, but there's no blood. About a minute 30 to go left in this bout. Willard back behind the jab. Faints the jab, lands the right hook to the body. Willard fires away again. Two good jabs. Those are the best jabs he's thrown all night. Under a minute to go in the bout. Willard faints. Keeping Esh off balance. Now Willard throws the jab in the right hand. Catching Esh squarely in the face. And the right eye begins to puff up. Willard sensing a late stoppage here. Final seconds. And it's Willard punching at the bell. Letting his hands go. Gangnam style. Windmill style. Battering Esh back into the ropes. We go to the judges. I have the fight even. 
I have the fight even. No, I'm incorrect. I have Willard by one. I had it even after nine. As I just quickly look at my scorecard, I have Willard the victor by one point. So it's a very close fight. Could go either way on my scorecard. The ringside score had Willard sweeping the last three rounds, which I did also. 10-8, 10-9, 10-9. I'm in agreement with that. But again, I gave Esh 2, 4, and 5. The ringside score unofficially had those three rounds even. Ringside score, 4 points for Willard. 98-94. I have Willard the victor by 1 point. We go to the results. They've collected the scorecards here in San Antonio at the Alamo Dome. We have a unanimous decision. 97-94, 97-94, 97-94 for your winner. Jess Willard, the giant from Kansas. So Jess Willard gets back in the win column. Eric Butter Ash. Once again, goes the distance. He has been a tough matchup in his three fights, but he has yet to win one. So a unanimous decision for the former heavyweight champion coming off the draw to the Italian Lorenzo Zanone. Esch coming off the draw to the Mexican. Uh, uh, let me bring the chart back up real quick. Jose Roman. He still can't get in the win column, though. So a good win for Jess Willard. And a bloody, battered, swollen Eric Butterbean Ash will have to regroup and think about things as his career moves forward. Let's go to the fight report quickly. Let's see. Let's let's go to rounds. What was it? What was it? Two, four, five, I think it was. So round two. Even Willard Esch. Round four, even Willard Esch. Round five, even across the board. Those are the rounds that I gave to Esch all. So it was a split, pretty much. One Esch, one Willard, one even. Round four, same thing. One even, one Esch, one Willard. And then round five, all three judges had it even. Down the stretch, we, we saw Willard quite strong. Uh, the three judges did not see it that way, though they gave the majority of those three rounds to Jess Willard. Let's get ready for our second bout. Tremendous matchup. Salvador Sanchez, Alexis Arguello. Arguello at featherweight does not have a fight. He lost for the vacant title against Julio Cesar Chavez when Chavez stopped Alexis Arguello. So Arguello now tries to rebuild his career for the moment at featherweight. Alexis Arguello took Julio Cesar Chavez, who's in the main event defending, defending against Roberto Duran for the lightweight championship of the world. Nine rounds, but it was Chavez stopping El Flaco. TKO, 2-10 in the ninth. Salvador Sanchez makes his ring debut at featherweight and in our universe. Alexis Arguello has had one fight. He's lost it for the light, as we just stated, the lightweight championship of the world, and makes his debut at featherweight. Let's go to the ringside chat for a moment. Mark Jones had Willard 97-93. Very close. Good job, Mark. Mark also says Willard is outclassing the Jelly Bean now. Absolutely. Sox Arizona is here. Check out that wonderful channel. And subscribe for all your Red Sox and Celtics needs and much, much more. Cutter Historical. If Esh wins, we riot. Well, he didn't win. But you are correct. Well, the riot was avoided, says Cutter Historical. Another fun channel in our community, so please check that out. Warren Chandler, they'll be needing... Then I'll be needing my 
beer back. <laughs> Mark Jones, Galento, Galata, Riot for sure. Absolutely. Steeler fan, 1933. Sanchez is the featherweight champion in his universe using Glory Days Boxing. We did a Glory Days, Glory Days Boxing bout uh, over the weekend. Cooney Weaver, what if WBA heavyweight championship title defense for Mike Weaver. That was supposed to happen, didn't happen, but should have happened. So that's on the channel. That was a fun bout. Glory Days Boxing, of course, can be purchased at sidelinestrategies.com. One of the best tabletop sports sims period and especially if you're a boxing fan you got to bring that to your tabletop library asap glory days boxing tabletop makes it nice sports time machine our good friend mr utah mike's join us check out that wonderful channel lots of stratomatic on mr utah mike's channel so Sanchez, Arguello, 10 rounds featherweights. 10 rounds featherweights. Second bout, four card, four card night here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Salvador Sanchez died a young man. Put his sports car underneath a truck in Mexico. Unfortunately, at his passing, very sad, I remember that. He was 44-1-1 one one with 32 stoppages. Epic bouts with um, Wilfredo Gomez, Pat Caudell, Azuma Nelson, and many, many others. Very tough fighter. Endurance, excellent. Power, solid at a six. Um... Is considered a clean fighter. He can fight elusive a bit. Likes to fight on the outside. He can go inside. He can bring the pressure a little bit. Alexis Arguello from Managua, Nicaragua. The thin man, El Flaco. 77-8-0 with 62 stoppages at the end of his career. Power is very good. It's an 8. Endurance, a 26. If he has your hurt, he's a plus 2 when it comes to finishing. He does not fight... Elusive, he will fight on the outside. Um, so it's either outside or pressure, it looks like here. He likes to land that right cross and then the hooks to the body. For Salvador Sanchez, same thing. He likes to land those crosses and hooks. Ten rounds, featherweights. Both fighters are in the ring here in the Alamo Dome, San Antonio, Texas. Bout number two. They get the final instructions from the referee. Sanchez in the red corner. Alexis Arguello in the blue corner. They touch gloves, and they will come out fighting. Sanchez on the inside is going to get a modification. He'll go from a 9 to an 8. You see the minus 1 there? Alexis Arguello is bringing the pressure. That's a minus 2 for Arguello when he brings the pressure. So he drops from an 11 to a 9. The lower the control number, the better. So the difference is 1 favoring Salvador Sanchez. Sanchez, again, 29 endurance. Arguello, 26. Here's the bell for round number 1. Both fighters meet at ring center. Who's going to land first? It's going to be Alexis Arguello as he digs. Hooks to the body, left and right. Sanchez looks to fire back. Sanchez works the angles. Left hook, right hook, left hook. To the face of Alexis Arguello. Arguello's defense, not there right now. Not the best defensive fire, fighter. Arguello lands an uppercut on the inside after putting the left into the ribs of Salvador Sanchez. The right uppercut scores. Grazing shots, but scoring shots. A good one, too, in tight by Alexis Arguello. The left and the right cross. Beautiful job. Arguello continues to punch. Arguello digs the left of the body, brings it up to the head, and lands a right hand to the jaw of Salvador Sanchez. Will Sanchez retaliate? Sanchez lands on the belt line. Referee warns him. But it's Arguello coming back with a left to the body, a left to the head, and a right cross. And Sanchez just smiles on the inside, steps away, and then comes back for more. And it's Sanchez firing. He ratatats Arguello with a four-punch salvo. Two to the body and two to the head. Arguello blinks, but there's no blood. Final seconds. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange favoring Salvador Sanchez. Those shots, both they both landed shots, but Sanchez got there harder. 
snapping the head of Alexis Arguello at the bell. But it was not enough in our eyes to give the round to Salvador Sanchez. We give it to Alexis Arguello, who dominated pretty much for a 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Then Salvador Sanchez came on after the marginal low blow that landed on the belt line. He really brought it on, Alexis Arguello. We prepare for round number two, scheduled for 10, the bell. Sanchez comes out of the red corner, Arguello out of the blue corner. Again, it's going to be toe-to-toe, -to -toe, phone booth warfare, ring center, with both pugilists trying to work the angles. A wild combination, which is usually uh, very rare with Alexis Arguello. He does score grazingly, but he continues to punch, forcing Sanchez back a bit. Double left hook! Then the right hand. Sanchez again shrugs it off. What a beard on Salvador Sanchez. Arguello really nailing him. But Sanchez going nowhere. Now Sanchez retaliates with four punches very hard into the body of Alexis Arguello. You can see the Nicaraguan almost wince with those blows. But El Flaco comes back. Left uppercut, right hand, left hook to the body. Sanchez is able to try to defend that, but those are scoring blows. And again, a oh, left hook to the body and a right cross by Alexis Arguello. That was a much better combination by Arguello. Sanchez again works hard to that body. He thinks he can wear down the man from Managua, Nicaragua, as he works both hands to the ribs of Alexis Arguello. Arguello comes back. Right cross, left hook, and another right hand. And this time, Sanchez buckles. Big shot. Sanchez backs up. Arguello follows up with a left right to the jaw. Sanchez looks to fight off the ropes, and he does with a left hook to the body and a right uppercut to the head. But another good round for Alexis Arguello. Arguello's power is proving to be the difference here in the first two rounds. This time, Sanchez felt the power. As he went back to the ropes, he was hurt, but he survives. We prepare for round number three. Joining us at ringside, Dale Cutlass, Cutter Historical, Sports Time Machine, Steeler Fan 1933, Mark Jones, Warren Chandler, Sox, Arizona, Thank you very much. Here we go. Round number three, scheduled for 10. The bell. Sanchez gets inside of Arguello's jab. Throws to the body. Arguello dodges. Sanchez comes to the head, misses. Arguello counters with a left hook to the ribs. Good job by Alexis Arguello. Arguello keeping Sanchez at bay. Throws the left. Misses the right hand. No counter by Sanchez. Arguello. Oh! Arguello goes low. The referee admonishes him. Arguello wants to touch gloves. Sanchez does, but he's not amused with those tactics. Sanchez will get a few seconds. The ref says, do you need more time? Salvador says, no, let's go. And it's Salvador Sanchez winging wildly. Arguello parries them away. And Arguello counters again with the left right to the body. Salvador Sanchez gets inside. Left hook, chopping right hand to the head. And a left hook to the head. Arguello blinking. We don't see any blood, though. Arguello comes back with two jabs from distance. Arguello looking to set up the right hand. Two more jabs. No right hand, though. He's got it cocked. He's waiting to fire. And there, he threw it. But Sanchez was waiting. He parried away. He parried it away. No counter from Salvador Sanchez. And there's the bell as they tie up. And the referee breaks them. Another good round for Alexis Arguello. We have three in the bank for the thin man, El Flaco, from Managua, Nicaragua. Alexis Arguello, he has really dictated the pace in the Sanchez corner through the Mexican interpreter. They're telling Salvador, you've dropped the first three rounds. They want three rounds of violence from Salvador Sanchez. Let's go to the unofficial score, the ringside score. As 
Mark Jones is leaving us. Thank you very much, Mark. Stay safe, my friend. See you soon. Ringside score has it 2-1. Sanchez, wow. Giving Salvador Sanchez rounds one and two. Alexis Arguello, I'm sorry, giving Salvador Sanchez rounds one and three. Alexis Arguello round two. We, given, we have given all three rounds to Alexis Arguello. Round four, there's the bell. Both fighters on the outside. Sanchez looking to catch Arguello with counters. There he puts two jabs on Arguello. Both fighters looking to faint and fire. It's a jabbing contest. Now Arguello lands his. Fighters again faint. No punches being thrown. Arguello faints the jab and lands the left hook to the body and a right hook to the head. Grazing shots but scoring shots. Sanchez looks to come back. Arguello is able to block those two jabs. About a minute to go here in round four. Good right hand. Good right hand by Salvador Sanchez. He fainted the jab and caught Arguello coming forward. Sanchez continues to punch, but he misses those shots. Arguello is parrying them away. Arguello having a good defensive night here. Under 30 seconds to go in round four. Arguello misses the right hand and the left hook to the head. Final moments. And there's the bell as they jostle, tie up, maul, and brawl. The referee breaks them. Four rounds in the books. We give that round even. Not much solid action. No one really landed a lot of solid punches. A lot of mauling, brawling. Both fighters, that's when they got close. Both fighters were trying to counter one another. And it didn't work out well for either. Here we go. Round number five scheduled for ten. Salvador Sanchez, Alexis Arguello. Sanchez works inside. Bangs the hooks to the body left, right, and then brings the left hand to the head. Again, Arguello blinks, but there's no blood. Sanchez staying in there. He's letting his hands go. Four-punch salvo. Two of them get through to the body. Sanchez continues to pound away, trying to back up Arguello. Arguello begrudgingly gives ground as Sanchez digging very hard to that body. Arguello trying to keep his elbows in tight, but some of those are getting through to the ribcage. Sanchez continues to punch into those ribs of Alexis Arguello. Arguello continues to begrudgingly give ground. As his back is getting closer to those ropes, Sanchez putting on tremendous pressure here. Left hook and a right uppercut snaps the head of Alexis Arguello. This is the best sustained attack by Salvador Sanchez. We have a minute 16 to go here in round five. Arguello looks to fight off the ropes. Lands a grazing right hand. Missed with the left hook to the head. Arguello continues to punch off the ropes. Right hand missed. Sanchez smiling at Arguello. He faints. Arguello moves forward. Wings a hook and Arguello blocks it. Sanchez continues to punch. Sanchez digs a left to the body, right left to the head. And there's the bell. Excellent round by Salvador Sanchez imposing his will on Alexis Arguello, forcing him back onto the ropes, continually punching and punching and punching. And that's what his corner has been asking him to do. And finally, Salvador Sanchez is doing it. We give that round quite easily to Salvador Sanchez. Let's go to round number six in a moment as the fighters are getting their final instructions and they take some water. Again, in the Mexican's corner, Salvador Sanchez, they want him to do just what he did in round number five. Punch, 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 back up, Alexis Arguello. In the Arguello corner, Eddie Futch is telling Alexis, bring it to him, back him up. So the fireworks are coming, folks. The bell for round six, and it's Arguello pouncing on Salvador Sanchez. He lands the right hand, but misses with the left hook. Sanchez looks to come back. Sanchez digs the left to the body and a right left to the head. Arguello, that's blood from the nose of Alexis Arguello. Salvador Sanchez throwing crisp punches. Digs a 1-2 to the body and a right uppercut to the head of Sal uh, Alexis Arguello. Both fighters standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, even exchange, trying to work the angles at ring center. Another furious toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, but Sanchez got the better of it. His punches were shorter and crisper. Arguello gives ground for a moment and then comes forward once again. Sanchez throws the cross. Arguello blocks it. 
Arguello looking to counter. Arguello throws and misses. Sanchez dips and comes up with a left and a right hand on the jaw of Alexis Arguello. Arguello buckles. Sanchez pushes him. Arguello goes into the ropes. Sanchez opens up with a left right to the body and a left right to the head. Sanchez looking to follow up. Arguello looks to fight off the ropes. And Arguello comes back with a left uppercut and a right hand stopping the Salvador Sanchez assault at the bell. Holy cow, what a round. What a round. Salvador Sanchez rocked Alexis Arguello. Arguello is back to the ropes, and he fought like a Nicaraguan badger to keep the furious fist of Salvador Sanchez off him. It was not enough, though, in our eyes. Not enough in our eyes. For Arguello to take the round, that was the best action. There have been a lot of good rounds in this fight, but that was the best action round. Tremendous round for both, and Sanchez took it in our eyes. We're going to go to the ringside scorer in a moment. Sanchez's endurance down to eight. Alexis Arguello breathing a bit heavier than Sanchez, laboring a bit more. Down His endurance down to a three. Both men still have their power. Sanchez, six power. Arguello 8 power, but it's Sanchez really listening to his corner the past two rounds, backing up Arguello, letting his hands go, bang away, bang away, bang away. After six rounds of Fistic Fury, the ringside scorer here in San Antonio at the Alamo Dome has it 59 Sanchez, 56 Arguello. We have it slightly closer. As we gave the first three rounds to Alexis Arguello. Again, our scorecards are unofficial. Jack Thompson has joined us at ringside. Round seven. Sanchez is going to try to get in tight. Arguello will try to work behind the jab. It's Arguello's jab, and it's a good one. Two jabs keeping Sanchez at bay. Sanchez gets underneath the jab, bangs a left to the body, grazing right hand to the jaw of Alexis Arguello. Arguello throws, misses, Sanchez comes out of the crouch, and he lands a left right hook to the jaw of Alexis Arguello. Arguello backs up for a moment, Sanchez pursues, Arguello nailed him with a right, left, right! Sanchez just walks through it, incredible! What a jaw on Salvador Sanchez, but it was a fearsome flurry by Alexis Arguello, he is finding the target. Sanchez now targets the Nicaraguan's body once again with a three-punch salvo, trying to slow down Alexis Arguello. Now they tie up, and it's Sanchez forcing Arguello to the ropes. The referee breaks them. Sanchez quickly pounces on Arguello, and he bangs away with a wild salvo. Four punches, two of them get through. One to the body, one to the head. He kept firing away. Arguello still on the ropes. Final seconds. Sanchez. Bada bing, bada boom. Four punches get through as he windmills, snapping Arguello's head. First punch was to the body. The next three, four, five to the head. And there is the bell. Another good round for Salvador Sanchez. Ever since his corner, it really lit a fire under him. He is bringing it and bringing it hard against the tall, thin man, the strong, thin man, El Flaco, Alexis Arguello from Managua, Nicaragua. Eddie Futch, a bit concerned in the Arguello corner. Excellent round here, and Arguello is really laboring now. He is really laboring. We prepare for round number eight. A big smile on Salvador Sanchez's face. Some might think it's a bit arrogant. I don't think so. A very polite young man. A confident young man. Let's go to the ringside scorer. Sanchez, 69. Arguello, 65. We have Sanchez ahead by less of a margin. Again, we gave the first three rounds to Alexis Arguello. Round eight, scheduled for 10. Sanchez will press the attack. Arguello trying to stay behind the jab. That's what Eddie Futch wants him to do. 
Sanchez works his way on the inside. Arguello ties him up. The referee breaks them. Sanchez gets tagged by two jabs, but Arguello does not throw the right hand. Sanchez bores in. Sanchez, one, two, three combination. Only one punch got through, but he's throwing punches. Arguello trying to keep Sanchez away from him. Throws the left and the right. Sanchez dips away. Arguello continues to fire. Arguello lands a grazing cross, misses the left hook. Sanchez gets in tight, bangs the body, and comes up to the head with a left right. Sanchez continues to try to throw. Arguello ties him up. Arguello is blinking, but there is no more blood. Sanchez bangs away hard to the body. Alexis Arguello trying to keep the arms in tight, but one of those punches get through. Sanchez again inside, bangs the body, and then rips an uppercut to the head. And there is the bell. Sanchez really mauled and brawled a lot in that round. It was a sloppy round for both. A physical round, and I give it to Salvador Sanchez. He has been imposing his will in these past four rounds upon a tiring Alexis Arguello. Two more bouts to come. The next bout, co-main event, Pepino Cuevas... Oscar De La Hoya, then the main event, 15 rounds. Lightweight championship of the world, the defending champion from Mexico, Julio Cesar Chavez against Roberto Duran. Duran, the former welterweight champion in our universe, lost to Nino LaRocca of Italy, now steps down in weight to try to take the lightweight championship. The bell for round nine. Close fight here, and it's Salvador Sanchez swarming Arguello. Arguello trying to fend him off. Ring center. Salvador Sanchez, two shots of the body, right hand to the head. Good job by Salvador Sanchez. Sanchez continues to pump and pump and pump those punches into the face of Alexis Arguello. Three punches over and over again. The last one being the right cross. Then the left uppercut. Unbelievable. Sanchez windmilling Gangnam style. Left, right to the body, right hand to the head. Sanchez will not be stopped. Oh, yes, he will, as the tall, thin man, Alexis Arguello, goes close to the Franks and Beans. Referee lets it go, says belt line. That slows down Sanchez for a minute. Minute. Arguello looks to load up. Left, right to the jaw of Sanchez. Sanchez walks through it. Sanchez looks to fire back. A one-two combination to the head. Of Alexis Arguello, under a minute to go here in round nine. Sanchez, left, right, snapping the head of Arguello. Arguello backs for a moment. Sanchez pursues. Sanchez banging away wildly. Arguello trying to keep his defense tight, but he is getting caught from some of those shots. Sanchez continues to fire at the bell. Bada bing, bada boom, and there is the bell. Salvador Sanchez swarming Alexis Arguello near the ropes, banging the body and up to the head. The punishing blows were those right uppercuts by Salvador Sanchez. We are through nine, and Sanchez, in our eyes, has complete control. A lot of concern in the Arguello corner with Eddie Futch. Eddie Futch is telling Alexis Arguello, you've got to land something big. You've got to land something big. Arguello has landed solid shots, but none of them have been able to dent the chin of Salvador Sanchez. He had Sanchez briefly hurt early in the bout. But Sanchez has really come on. Ringside score, Salvador Sanchez, 88-84. We have Sanchez up by, by less of a margin. In the Sanchez corner through the Mexican interpreter, they like what they're seeing. They want Salvador to finish strong and win this 10-rounder. Fighters at ring center, they touch gloves. Here we go, final three minutes of this 10-round affair. The bell, and it's Sanchez boring in against a tiring Alexis Arguello. Sanchez winging wildly. Arguello is able to parry the punches away. Slides away from Sanchez. Arguello looks to put the jab on him. There's a jab in the right hand. Jab and right hand land on Salvador Sanchez, but the steam is a bit gone from the Arguello punches at the moment. Sanchez gets in tight. Arguello ties him up. Referee breaks them. Arguello pawing, pawing, pawing. Now throws a left right to the body of Salvador Sanchez. 
Arguello lands a right hand to the head. Good right cross. And then a left hook to the body and back at distance. Arguello not fleet of foot. Sanchez trying to get in. But it's Arguello with a jab and a right hand. Good job by Arguello. Best round in many a round for the tall, thin, strong man from Managua, Nicaragua, Alexis Arguello. Arguello continues to punch. Misses with the left hook and the right hand. No counter by Sanchez. Under 45 seconds ago here in round 10, the final round. Oh, left hook to the body, right hand to the jaw of Salvador Sanchez. And this time Sanchez buckles. 11 seconds ago, Arguello banging away at the bell. And the referee jumps in. Alexis Arguello, that was the best punch he landed left to the body and booyah with the right hand, buckling the knees of Salvador Sanchez. Then he went flailing away with short, hard punches. Beautiful combination, but Sanchez was able to survive. Definitely Arguello in round 10 quite easily. This is going to be a tight bout here, folks. Let's go to the ringside scorer. Sanchez, 97-94. But the ringside scorer gave the first, gave two out of th the first three rounds to Sanchez. I gave the first three rounds to Alexis Arguello. Then you have eight and ten. I have it a draw. I have it a draw. The ringside scorer has Sanchez winning by three. We await the judge's decision. Jack Cole has joined us at ringside. Hope all is well. He's here along with. Jack Thompson, Steeler Fan 1933, Mark Jones, Dale Cutlass, Cutter Historical, Sports Time Machine, Warren Chandler. Mark Jones has left the building. Uh, we appreciate that he stopped by. And we've got everybody. Excellent. All right, Jack, you do that, my friend. Thank you very much. Scorecards have been collected. Here is your official announcement. 96-95 Sanchez. 95-95 even. 99-93 Sanchez. So Salvador Sanchez wins a majority decision. Two judges obviously had it very close. And one judge was more in line with the ringside score. Giving Sanchez a six-point victory. 99-93. Again, we had it even. So Salvador Sanchez picks up his first win in his first appearance in our Glory Days Boxing Universe. Alexis Arguello is 0-1 at featherweight, 0-1 at lightweight, 0-2 overall. But a good effort by Alexis Arguello. Where does he go from here? I don't know, but bigger and better things for Salvador Sanchez. Will he be challenging Willie Pep for the championship? Yes, most likely he will now. Cut historical says nuts as he did not like the decision. I had it a draw. I had it even. I had the 90. I'm in agreement with judge number three, 95 95. I could see 96 95, but again, I didn't agree with the ringside score and I don't agree with judge number two, 99 93. Let's just go to the fight report real quickly. How did they give the first three rounds? I gave all three rounds to Arguello out of the blue corner. First round, two judges, Sanchez, one Arguello. Second round, two judges, Arguello, one Sanchez. Third round, two judges, Sanchez, one judge, Arguello. There's the difference right there. The close rounds on judge number two scorecards all went to Salvador Sanchez. And now for the co-main event. Mexican versus Mexican-American. Again, we have a sold-out Alamo Dome here in San Antonio, Texas. Main event, Julio Cesar Chavez, Roberto Duran, lightweight championship of the world. Pepino Cuevas... Overall record, 35-15-0 with 31 stoppages. Mexico City, Mexico. Oscar, De La Hoya, the Golden Boy. Montebello, California, gold medal winner 
for the United States of America in the Olympics. 39-6-0 with 30 stoppages. The winner will get a crack at Nino Laraca, the welterweight champion of the world from Italy. Endurance for Pepino Cuevas, 26. Endurance for Oscar De La Hoya, 24. Power for Cuevas, 9. Power for De La Hoya, 8. De La Hoya likes to hook and work off the jab. He throws combinations and hard punches. Pepino Cuevas, he hooks, hooks, and hooks some more. He just wings. When he throws a jab, it's non-existent. It's a feint. It's a measurer. He does not throw many jabs. He throws hard, booming punches with bad intentions. He wants to take you out. Again, this is a title eliminator. The winner will get a shot at Nino LaRocca, the welterweight champion in our universe. Might not be LaRocca's next defense, but it will be, you know, we'll give LaRocca. He'll get a uh, a defense of his choosing in Italy, and then he will have to fight fight the winner of this fight. S. G. J. Jamie's joined us. Just tuned in, but we'll have to go back and watch the fight. Sanchez Arguello can't get better than that. Oh, it was a good fight. Good fight. The first fight was a fun fight with Jess Willard and Eric Butterbean Esh. So. All right, so Pepino Cuevas, Oscar De La Hoya, 10 rounds, welterweights, co-main event. The main event, 15 rounds, lightweight championship of the world. Julio Cesar Chavez, who stopped Alexis Arguello in nine to win the vacant title, takes on Roberto Duran, the former welterweight champion, who decision uh, won a close decision over Marlon Starlin from Hartford, Connecticut, and then was upset in Rome, Italy. As he got a lot of money to fight in Rome against Nino LaRocca, and LaRocca fought the fight of his life to defeat the legendary Roberto Duran. To the ring we go. Fighters are in the ring at ring center to get the final instructions. Pepino Cuevas out of the red corner. Oscar De La Hoya out of the blue corner. Cuevas likes to bring the pressure and when he does he gets a minus two from his control, so it goes from a nine to a seven. That's a great benefit. De La Hoya likes to fight on the inside. When he does, he gets a minus one off of his control, so it goes from a nine to a ten, but it's still favoring Cuevas by two. Remember, the lower the control number, the better against the 20-sided die. The final instructions are given. They begrudgingly touch gloves. Cuevas... With a stare, uh, what a stare down between Cuevas and De La Hoya. Now they go back to their corners. Here is the bell for round number one. And it's Oscar De La Hoya. Cuevas, ring center. De La Hoya punching away. De La Hoya letting the hooks rip. Two to the body, two to the head. Now two more to the head. And Cuevas is hurt. De La Hoya jumps right on Pepino. Cuevas looking to end it early. De La Hoya. Again, rips shots to the body, then up to the head. Cuevas on the ropes. Cuevas shoves him away. Cuevas looks to fight off the ropes. Wings wild uppercuts and a left hook, but he misses. No counter by De La Hoya. Cuevas ties up De La Hoya as De La Hoya tried to come in. Referee separates him. Action moves back to ring center. Cuevas looking to load up. Cuevas wings a wild uppercut. It's a grazing shot. He missed with the right hand, though. It was a left uppercut that score. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, but De La Hoya's punches were shorter. They landed with the better effect. Under a minute to go here in round number one. And it's Cuevas! Left hook to the body, left hook to the head, right hook to the head! And De La Hoya shoves Cuevas away. 34 seconds to go. Bombs are flying here in San Antonio, Texas at the Alamo Dome. De La Hoya bangs the body with a left-right. At the bell, a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Holy cow. That was definitely a De La Hoya round, though Cuevas came back pretty well. We give it to Oscar De La Hoya. So does the ringside scorer. Steve Tower has joined us here at ringside. Check out that wonderful channel, which is after further review with Steve Tower, 
Soccer Blast game on his channel tonight. I'll be checking that out tomorrow at work. So check that out. Jason Cull says, James lights out Tony, beat Sugar Ray Robinson by knockout for the middleweight for the middleweight bout. A shocking result. It's why I love this game. This is an excellent game. Title bout two is an excellent game. Glory Days Boxing. Fab Tabulous game. They're all wonderful games. Here we go. Round number two, the bell. Both fighters ring center. They're going to stand and bang. Cuevas throws wildly. Misses his prey, Oscar De La Hoya. Cuevas continues to fire. A very aggressive combination, digging hard in the body, then going to the head. He throws punches and bunches, and with bad intentions, he's the mad hooker from Mexico City, Mexico. Arguello, I'm sorry, uh, De La Hoya backs for a moment. Cuevas brings the pressure. De La Hoya. Hooks to the body left, right, trying to slow down the man from Mexico City. And there it is! Left hook to the jaw, right hook to the jaw, another left hook to the jaw. Cuevas goes stumbling back into the ropes. He is badly hurt. Badly hurt. De La Hoya looks to follow up. De La Hoya throwing punches. Cuevas on the rope, bipping and bobbing. De La Hoya is not landing cleanly. De La Hoya measures with the jab. De La Hoya lands the hook to the body, then a right hand to the head. Cuevas still on those ropes. De La Hoya again bangs the body. Cuevas dangerously not throwing punches on the ropes. De La Hoya banging away, left right to the body, left right to the head. Cuevas tries to fight off the ropes. He lands a left to the body, and there is the bell. Another excellent round from the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Montebello, California, gold medal winner, for the United States of America. After further review with Steve Towers, says, thanks, Al. It was a great match. Hope to get more soccer blasts on the table this year. Excellent. Don't spoil it because I'm going to listen to it at work tomorrow. It was USA versus Canada. So check it out, folks. And if you have checked it out, please don't spoil it for me because I do like to listen to my YouTubing friends at work. Usually I start off early in the morning when I get ready for work. Then I listen in the car. Then I get settled in at work. And then I put it back on. But check that out. USA, Canada, Soccer Blast, Steve Tower. Channel after further review with who? Steve Tower. Come on, folks. You should know this. Another good round for De La Hoya. We have a two... O for Oscar De La Hoya. We'll go to the ringside score in a moment. 2-0 De La Hoya. So we're in agreement there. Round 3 scheduled for 10. The winner will get a crack at Nino LaRocca, the champion from Italy. The welterweight champion. The bell, round 3. Cuevas comes raging out. De La Hoya meets him at ring center. De La Hoya bangs a hook to the body but missed the right hand to the head. De La Hoya continues to punch with a 1-2 to the head. Good short hooks catching Cuevas. Cuevas not the best defensive fighter at all in the world. Both fighters wing and miss as Cuevas pushed De La Hoya off balance. But it's De La Hoya coming back with a left right to the body and now another right hand to the body as he held Cuevas in a clinch, worked his hand free. Cuevas loads up and Cuevas lands a left to the body and a right hand to the head of Oscar De La Hoya. That was that 20 roll. When you get the 20 roll, defense doesn't matter. De La Hoya comes back. Now De La Hoya jabs, steps back, sidesteps, now moves forward again. And De La Hoya fires, bangs that body. De La Hoya bangs the body quite hard with the left and the right. Right hand to the head, though, afterwards was grazing. De La Hoya continues to work hard on the inside. He is outworking Pepino Cuevas with shots to the body. They are head-to-head, -head, billy goat to billy goat, phone booth warfare at ring center, and it's De La Hoya getting the best of it. De La Hoya with a left right to the body, right hand, left hook to the head! And Cuevas buckles, and there is the bell. De La Hoya has been tremendous in these first three rounds. De La Hoya with very good power. It's the hand speed of Oscar De La Hoya that is winning the day. He is letting his hands go. Cuevas throws, but he is kept off balance by the hand speed, the angles 
that Delahoy is using on the inside or from the outside. We have given the first three rounds to Oscar De La Hoya. There's no other way to see it unless someone was paying you to see it a different way. And seeing that it's boxing, it could happen. Ringside scorer, 3-0 De La Hoya. Al Red Sox fan, 3-0 De La Hoya. The three blind mice, we don't know yet. SDJ, SGJ Jamie says that could have been a 10-8 round in the second. I agree. I agree. Round four, in the Mexican's corner, through the interpreter, they're telling Pepino, you got to do something. You got to do something. They're very frustrated with Pepino Cuevas. It's not that he's tr not trying. He's very frustrated. De La Hoya has been very good. Round four, the bell. And it's Pepino Cuevas. Cuevas this time from the outside looking to catch De La Hoya coming in. And he does with a left right to the body and a left right to the head. Again, they're winging, winging wide punches. Cuevas a little speedier than people think when he gets in rhythm. Now De La Hoya tries to take him out of the rhythm. De La Hoya feints a right, left hook to the jaw. And Cuevas buckles and goes into the ropes. Oh my lord. De La Hoya fainted the right and then came with the left hook to the jaw. Cuevas on the ropes. De La Hoya bangs the body. De La Hoya continues to attack Cuevas on the ropes. Banging left right to the body, left right to the head. Cuevas tries to tie up De La Hoya. De La Hoya works his hands free. De La Hoya continues to punch. Chopping right hand, left to the body. About a minute to go here in round four. Cuevas trapped on those ropes. De La Hoya winging wildly. He's got to shorten those punches up. He misses. Cuevas comes off the ropes with a left to the body and a right uppercut to the head of Oscar De La Hoya. Now De La Hoya backs up a bit. Cuevas circles towards ring center. And Cuevas faints the right, lands a left to the body. De La Hoya gets inside. De La Hoya bangs a left to the body and a right uppercut, snapping the Mexican's head. Final moments here of round number four, and it's Oscar De La Hoya throwing a salvo of four punches. Two got through. And that's pretty good. Another round for Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya is just quicker. He's working the angles, whether on the inside or the outside. His punches are shorter and truer, straighter and truer. Where Pepino Cuevas, he wings and he wings hard. John Wise, how you doing? He says, what weight class are these two? Welterweights, 147 pounds. Both were former welterweight champions. Pepino Cuevas, uh, he lost to Tommy Hearns to lose the title. Devastating knockout. Oscar De La Hoya, who did he beat for the welterweight championship? Did he beat Chavez for the welterweight championship? De La Hoya was... Was he junior lightweight, lightweight, welterweight, and junior middleweight, I think, champion? Or did he not win the junior middleweight? Did he win four titles? Anyhow. Oh, junior welterweight also, I believe. Good round for Oscar De La Hoya. Warren Chandler says, Adelaide Bird, 3-0 to Cuevas. Yeah, if she's judging, it, it probably you're probably correct. SGJ Jamie, Cuevas dodged about five possible knockdowns. That, and that can come back to haunt you because Cuevas still has his power. I'm trying to think who Cuevas beat for the title. I can't remember who Cuevas beat for the title. John Weiss says, 147 pounds. That's what I was in high school. <laughs> if someone looked that up. Who did Cuevas beat for the title? It slips my mind now. He lost to Tommy Hearns. He lost the title to Tommy Hearns in Detroit. Uh, Tommy Hearns starched him in two rounds. One of the most devastating knockouts you'll ever see. Who the hell did Cuevas beat? Anyway, I'll have to look it up later. We've given four rounds for De La Hoya. The ringside scorer is giving it four rounds for De La Hoya. And somewhere in the world, Adelaide Bird has given four rounds to Pepino Cuevas. Round five, scheduled for ten, the bell. And it's De La Hoya in control once again. 
on the inside. Cuevas, he's looking to counter De La Hoya coming in, but De La Hoya works the body quite well, and the angles on the inside. Both fighters faint but don't fire. De La Hoya again works the angles on the inside, bangs two shots to the body, and then a left uppercut to the head of Pepino Cuevas. De La Hoya continues the onslaught on the inside, working very hard to the body. Ch uh, Warren Chandler tells me, Angel Espada, thank you very much. Pepino Cuevas defeated Angel Espada. Am I correct with that? Is that what you're saying? Thank you, Warren. So a good start here for the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Cuevas has no answer. Big combination by Oscar De La Hoya. Bangs the body, comes to the head, all hooks. One, two to the body, one, two to the head. Backing up, Pepino Cuevas. Cuevas trying to circle and land uh, something big, but it's De La Hoya winging a right hand. Cuevas is able to evade it, but he's not throwing punches. It is De La Hoya with a one, two, three. Two punches get through out of those three shots, the left and the right. To the head of Pepino Cuevas. De La Hoya missed the left hook, but lands a right uppercut into the chest area of Pepino Cuevas. At the bell, they punch, and it's Oscar De La Hoya throwing and missing as Cuevas ties him up. Another good round for Oscar De La Hoya. 5-0 for the gold medal winner. The pugilist from Montebello, California, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Pepino Cuevas has got to get it going here. It looks like De La Hoya will be getting a shot at Nino Laraca, the world champion from Italy. Laraca will get a voluntary defense before he will have to face the winner of this fight. De La Hoya very happy in his corner. Here's the bell for round six. That's not the same to be said. In the Cuevas corner, Cuevas is going to rage out at De La Hoya. De La Hoya will meet at ring center. Toe-to-toe -to -toe phone booth warfare. And it's Cuevas banging the body with a left right. And then a left uppercut and a chopping right hand to the head of De La Hoya. Cuevas continues to punch, banging hard to the body. Cuevas punching away. Cuevas misses. No counter by De La Hoya. Now De La Hoya gets in punching range. Working the angles, bangs the body with a 1-2-3 combination. Cuevas comes back. Cuevas wings wildly towards the head. De La Hoya ducks underneath. Cuevas continues to fire. Cuevas missed the right hand but dug the left into the rib cage of Oscar De La Hoya. Cuevas knows he needs something big. And there it is! Left, right, left to the job. De La Hoya! De La Hoya buckles. Cuevas pushes him more off balance. De La Hoya goes into the ropes. Cuevas pursues his prey. Cuevas pounding away. De La Hoya's in big trouble. Cuevas continues to pound away. De La Hoya, and there is the bell. There is the bell. Pepino Cuevas had his day in the sun, and it came in round six at the Alamo Dome. He finally tagged Oscar De La Hoya over and over again. He heard him. De La Hoya buckled. Cuevas pushed him. De La Hoya went stumbling into the ropes. And then Pepino Cuevas began to mug Oscar De La Hoya. Tremendous round for Pepino Cuevas. You could give it 10-8 for Pepino. Did he shoot both shells in the double barrel shotgun there? Does he have anything left? That round was Cuevas. Here we go for round number seven. What an onslaught by Pepino Cuevas. Here we go. Round seven. Both fighters on the inside. It's De La Hoya who starts the action with a couple of hooks to the body. Cuevas looks to fire back. Left hook to the body. Right hand to the head. It was a right cross. De La Hoya blinks, but there's no blood. Cuevas continues to punch away, banging lefts and right hooks to the body. De La Hoya works the angles. Throws, misses. Cuevas dips, comes up. Left right to the jaw of Oscar De La Hoya. A minute 30 to go here in round 10. They're slugging it out at ring center. Left hook to the body, right uppercut. 
by Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya continues to punch with a wild combination, pushing, pushing Cuevas off balance, but he landed a couple of those shots. De La Hoya backs up Cuevas, and he lands a right, left, right to the jaw of Cuevas. Cuevas looks to load up. Cuevas bangs two to the body, and then a left hook to the head of Oscar De La Hoya. At the bell, it's De La Hoya throwing, and there is the bell. De La Hoya, De La Hoya landed a pity pat one, two, but they were scoring blows. Very close round. Is it too late for Pepino Cuevas, though? We give that round even. We give that round even. Warren Chandler says, On February 26, in the year 2000, De La Hoya knocked out Darrell Coley. Was that Darrell Chop Chop Coley? who was 34-1-2 in a WBC Eliminator for the welterweight title. The WBC later awarded De La Hoya the welterweight title after Trinidad vacated it, so that's when Trinidad moved up to junior middleweight. Okay, I knew he had the belt. I just couldn't remember who he beat, and that's why I don't remember it, because he, he won a title eliminator and then was given the belt. Thank you, Warren. They gave round seven even. As we did, we're in agreement with the ringside scorer, 69-65, De La Hoya. Round 8, scheduled for 10. De La Hoya in control. Pepino Cuevas trying to come on. It's toe-to-toe -to -toe warfare. Ring center, and it's De La Hoya being first, being first, and being first. Banging the body, and then coming up to the head, scoring four punches. De La Hoya throws, missed the right hand, but dug the left into Pepino Cuevas' ribcage. Cuevas looks to load up. Cuevas bangs a left right to the body. Cuevas is hooking. And Cuevas loads up. De La Hoya lands. Right uppercut, left hook, right hook. Cuevas is in big trouble. Cuevas on Queer Street. Cuevas back to the ropes. De La Hoya looks to end it here. Cuevas is trying to dip, dive away. De La Hoya cannot land any big punches. He does get through with a few blows. Now Cuevas looks to fire back. Cuevas off the ropes, bangs the body. De La Hoya keeps Cuevas pinned to those ropes. Left hook to the body, right uppercut, snapping the head of the Mexican. De La Hoya continues his onslaught, pawing with the jab, and a right hand lands on Cuevas. We're coming to the bell, and there is the bell. De La Hoya with a 1-2-3, left right to the body, left uppercut to the head. Excellent round for Oscar De La Hoya. Cuevas breathing very heavily as he sits on his stool. He's, in our eyes, he has to knock out the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya, he's laboring also, but he's well ahead, again, in our opinion. The bell for round nine in the Mexican's corner. They're telling him, you got to knock him out. And Cuevas comes raging out against De La Hoya. De La Hoya does not heed his corner's advice. He rages out towards Pepino Cuevas. He wants a knockout. De La Hoya... Looks, faints, Cuevas fires, misses, De La Hoya counters with a right hand. Good job by Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya continues to punch, but he misses. Cuevas looks to counter with a one-two to the body, and he does. Cuevas continues to punch. Cuevas banging the body. He's got to bring those shots to the head. Cuevas brings a left right to the head. De La Hoya blinks, but there's no blood. De La Hoya looks to retaliate. He lands a chopping right hand left hook. Cuevas has swelling near the left eye. About a minute to go here in round nine. De La Hoya punching away. And that swelling is getting worse on the on the Pepino Cuevas eye. Those hooks landed by Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya continues to punch. Two jabs and a right hand. Cuevas blinking. He's not punching. Now he sets his punches. And he bangs with a left, right, left. Two to the body and up to the head. Final seconds of round nine. They tie up and the referee breaks them. So Cuevas outpunched De La Hoya, but De La Hoya landed the better shots. Who do you give it to? They're going to work on that swelling near the left eye of Pepino Cuevas. Fortunately for him, there's only three more minutes in this fight. Both men's power has dropped as they are fatigued. Cuevas very susceptible to a knockdown now. They've told Cuevas in his corner he needs a knockout to win. As they slap him in the face, 
They're saying Pepino, Pepino. Subito, subito, rapido, rapido. Fuerte. Here's the bell for round 10. Cuevas comes out to wage all out war. They faint but don't fire. Cuevas moves forward and he is met by the fist of Oscar De La Hoya, but he dips underneath. Cuevas comes up throwing. Right, left to the head. Lands on De La Hoya. Now De La Hoya ties up Cuevas. Cuevas very frustrated. De La Hoya holding on. Now the referee pries them apart. A minute 30 to go in this bout. Cuevas sets his feet and bangs. One, two to the body. He's got to bring those shots to the head. Oh, he walks into a right left. To the jaw. What shots by De La Hoya. And down goes Cuevas. De La Hoya to the neutral corner. The referee picks up the count at five, six, seven, eight. Cuevas struggles to his feet at the count of eight. The referee looks into his eyes, wipes his gloves. De La Hoya has about a minute to go here to knock out Pepino Cuevas. De La Hoya landing, but nothing solid. De La Hoya again throwing. Cuevas covering up. 18 seconds to go. It's all Oscar De La Hoya. And there is the bell as Cuevas was on the ropes. De La Hoya was flailing away, but could not land the blows to drop the Mexican to the canvas for the 10 count. But we have Oscar De La Hoya winning a lopsided decision. He put the explanation point on this bout by dropping Cuevas about the minute mark of the 10th and final round. Cuevas struggled to his feet and to his credit went the distance. The ringside score and myself have it 99-91. Both of our scorecards are unofficial of course. They collect the judges scorecards for the final time. The commission takes a look at the scores. We await the decision. Again, we see De La Hoya winning a lopsided decision and getting a title shot at Nino LaRocca of Italy, the welterweight champion. LaRocca upset Roberto Duran, who is in our main event. Duran has dropped down to lightweight to challenge Julio Cesar Chavez for the world title. Chavez, the defending champion, who knocked out, uh, stopped Alexis Arguello, who fought Salvador Sanchez in our second bout. The cards are collected. We go to the ring announcer. After 10 rounds, we have a unanimous decision. 99-90, 97-92, 98-92 for your winner. Oscar De La Hoya, the golden boy, the gold medal winner from Montebello, California. And all the female fans explode here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. I caught myself. I was going to say something else. Probably get banned from YouTube. You know what I'm saying. Right? Okay. So Oscar De La Hoya, excellent effort by the Golden Boy. Many a female fan he has. Pepino Cuevas, very frustrated. De La Hoya was there to be hit, he felt. But De La Hoya, I mean, he he worked the angles. De La Hoya fought on the inside for a great deal. Brought the pressure on occasions, fought from the outside. He worked the angles beautifully. And he let his hands go. His punches were straighter, truer, and through. Well, Pepino Cuevas, he loads up. I mean, if he hits you, he's going to hurt you. But he loads up. Now on to the main event. Julio Cesar Chavez. Defends his lightweight championship of the world against Roberto Duran. 15 rounds. Alamo Dome. San Antonio, Texas. Not a seat to be had. Every seat that was available to be sold has been sold. Julio Cesar Chavez is 1-0. Let's go to the preview. He defeated Alexis Arguello for the vacant lightweight championship, TKO round 9. Roberto Duran won the vacant welterweight title by majority points decision over Marlon Starling of Hartford, Connecticut. 
then went to Rome, Italy, in what he thought was going to be an easy title defense, got paid buku cash, and lost a unanimous decision to the Italian Nino Laraca, 143-142, 145-142, 144-142, La Raca fought the fight of his life. And thus he wears the welterweight belt. Duran will be making his inaugural debut at lightweight. So he has no record at lightweight. Chavez is 1-0. and oh. Chavez, Sonora, Mexico. Roberto Duran, El... Chorillo, Panama. Take care, John Wise. Have a good night, my friend. Take care, Steve Towers. Thank you very much for stopping by. Julio Cesar Chavez, overall record, 107-6-2 with 85 stoppages. Roberto Duran's overall record, well, that's not correct. I, I, there's no way I can edit that. I should have looked up his record, but it's not. his overall record is not 39-6-0 with 30 knockouts. That is incorrect. Duran's endurance is 26. Chavez's endurance, X of tremendous, 33. Chavez's power is a 7. Duran's power is a 10. He was tenacious as a lightweight. Both defenses are 2s. Control will favor Duran by 1. Again, we're going with those optional rules, so they will be affected by the way the fighters fight. Chavez likes to hook and land the uppercuts. He wants to fight on the inside. He will use his jab to get in there. He did not have a bad jab, Julio Cesar Chavez. Roberto Duran throws in combinations, and he will throw the hook a lot. Again, Chav uh, Duran also does not have a bad jab. To the ring we go. The main event, 15 rounds, lightweight championship of the world. The defending title holder, Julio Cesar Chavez, Mexico. The challenger, former welterweight champion, Roberto Duran, Panama. Fighters get their final instructions, and this is quite a stare down. Duran does not want to touch gloves. Now he does as he slams his fist into Chavez's gloves. Chavez not amused with that. They go back to their corners. Chavez, you can see pressure fighter. Uh, his defense is a one. Duran pressure. His defense drops to a one. Minus two. From the control, the lower the control, the better. It's going to favor Duran by one, eight to seven. Here's the bell. They're going to wage war. Someone could go down right away. And it's Chavez banging away. Left hook to the body, right uppercut. Snapping the head of the Panamanian, Roberto Duran. Duran comes firing back. Tremendous five-punch combination. Big punches. And Chavez walks through them. Chavez walks through them. Duran continues to punch. Another five-punch salvo. And Duran... Continues to punch away. Chavez walking through but not punching. Chavez now loads up. Chavez digs a left right to the body. Excellent start for Roberto Duran, but Chavez comes right back. Chavez staying in there, working the angles. Bangs another left right to the body. Toe to toe they go. They land. 44 seconds to go in an action-packed first round. Chavez left right to the head. Duran blinks. No blood. 34 seconds to go. Chavez outworking Duran, digs a left right to the body and a right uppercut, snapping the head of the Panamanian. Duran backs up. Chavez fires, and he again lands a left right to the body. And then a left uppercut, snapping the head of Roberto Duran. Duran had his moments midway through the round. Chavez had a quick start and a fabulous finish. Julio Cesar Chavez takes round one in our eyes. Duran sneers at Chavez as he goes back to his corner. The bell for round number two. They're going to fight on the inside once again. Advantage goes to Duran. They tie up. Referee breaks them. Chavez, left right to the body. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. They work the angles. This is phone booth warfare. We've seen a lot of that tonight. Duran looks to load up. Left hook, right hand, left hook. Chavez buckled. Duran pushes him away. Duran looking to land the kill shot. Oh, my Lord. Duran right, left, right to the jaw. 
of Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez grabs on. Now pushes Duran away. Dur Chavez seems to have cleared his head for the moment. Duran lands on the belt line. A minute to go here in round number two. Big round for Duran. Toe to toe exchange, even exchange. Action towards ring center. Under 30 seconds ago, Duran hooks to the body with a left right. Duran punching at the bell. Left right to the head of Chavez, and there is the bell. So Duran comes back in magnificent fashion, takes round two. Let's go to the ringside scorer. One round apiece, same way we see it. Ray Arcel and Freddie Brown in the Duran corner. Here's the bell, round number three. Toe-to-toe -to -toe warfare, ring center again, and it's Roberto Duran. Left to the body, left to the head, right hook to the jaw. Chavez buckles, Duran pushes him back. Duran bangs the body and up to the head. He missed with the head shots, but landed the body shots. Duran forcing Chavez back towards the ropes. Chavez trying to stand his ground. Duran bangs away with a one-two to the body and then up to the head with two more shots. Chavez comes back with a left to the body, right uppercut to the chest area of Roberto Duran. Duran trying to keep Chavez pinned to those ropes. Big shots by Roberto Duran. Chavez buckles. Duran bores in. Chavez on the ropes. Duran lands another combination left right to the body. Duran continues to punch. Right hand, left hook, right hand, left hook to the jaw of Chavez. Chavez ties up. Duran pulls away. Duran lands to the belt line. Final moments. Another huge round for Roberto Duran. Chavez on the ropes. Duran looking to take the title. A jab and a right hand catch Chavez at the bell. Chavez took the first round big. Duran's taking rounds two and three big. Ray Arcel and Eddie and Freddie Brown very happy in the Duran corner. The Chavez corner, they're telling him through the interpreter again, we're listening. Stay off the rope. But Duran is incensed. He wants a world title. He knows what it is to be world champion. He was welterweight champion in our universe, lost it to Laraka of Italy. Now he wants to take the lightweight championship away from Chavez. The bell for round number four. And it's Duran swarming Chavez at ring center. Missed with the head shots, but banged the body quite well. Duran continues to punch. Left to the body, right uppercut. He kind of held Chavez in place, and he nailed him with that right uppercut. Chavez comes back with a four-punch combination. Two to the body and two to the head. All hard hooks. Duran is undeterred. Chopping right hand to the head. And then a left into the ribs of the Mexican Julio Cesar Chavez. Both fighters throw and miss, but it's Duran boring in, working the angles, working his hands free. Left uppercut, right hand, another left uppercut. Chavez pushes Duran away. Duran slides to his right. Duran slides back. Duran bangs the body and bangs away with an uppercut. It was a right uppercut. Excellent job by Duran. Chavez throws a left hook, misses, hits Duran with a grazing right uppercut. Chavez trying to throw but it's Duran on the inside outworking the man from Sonora Mexico with a four punch salvo one to the body three to the head excellent job by Roberto Duran another big round for the Panamanian we have it 3-1 Duran crowd definitely favoring Chavez here as he is from Mexico and we are fighting at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio Texas but Duran has his fair share of fans. The bell for round five, scheduled for 15. Lightweight championship of the world. At stake, Chavez the defending title holder, Duran the challenger. Oh, they clash heads. And Duran has some swelling near the right A. Chavez seems no worse for the wear. Will this change... The tide of battle, Duran in rage. Duran left right to the jaw of Julio Cesar Chavez. Duran continues to punch. 
Big shots to the body and up to the head. Chavez gives ground. Duran fires away. Again, two shots to the body, then up to the head. They're all hooks. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Duran gets the better of it. Chavez continues to back. He's starting to get dangerously close to the ropes. Duran measuring and feints the jab. Right hook to the body. Left hook to the jaw of Julio Cesar Chavez. Under a minute to go. Chavez tries to fight back. Digs a one-two to the body. Duran infuriated. Bangs back to the body. Duran firing away at the bell, snapping the Mexican's head over and over again. Another huge round for Roberto Duran. Five are in the books here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. We have it 4-1 Duran. So does the ringside score. How will a three blind mice score it? We don't know. Our scorecards are unofficial. Final bout of our four bout night here at the Alamo Dome. Warren Chandler says, being from the UK, I didn't realize the Alamo Dome was real. I thought it was a clever name, Alamo. <laughs> well, that's where the, the Alamo was around that area where they... Famous phrase, remember the Alamo. Here we go, round number six. Toe to toe warfare, ring center. Chavez has to change the tide of battle. Chavez throws punches, he lands, but they're grazing shots. Duran looks to counter. Oh my lord, right hand, left hook, catching Chavez right on the jaw. Chavez grabs on to Duran, pushes him away. Duran continues to punch. Left hook to the body, right uppercut. Chavez grabs onto Duran again. Duran works his way free. Duran looks to punch. Duran bangs the body, one, two, and then a right uppercut as he holds Chavez's head in place. Chavez looks to bang back. Chavez works the body. Both fighters faint but don't throw. Toe to toe warfare, ring center, phone booth warfare. There's an exchange. Both men landed. Chavez looks to load up. Lands grazing shots to the body as Duran works the angles. Chavez, good chopping right hand. Good chopping right hand by Chavez. He followed it with a left to the ribs of the Panamanian. Duran bangs the body with a one-two. The bell. Ending round six. And that was a tighter round, but I still give it to Roberto Duran. Let's see how the ringside scorer has it. Duran, 59-54. Duran, we are in agreement. Round seven coming up. Fighters take a swig of water. I take a swig of water. They're telling Chavez in his corner he needs to do something big. He is way behind. They're being very honest with the lightweight champion, Julio Cesar Chavez. The bell for round seven. A very confident Duran comes flying off his stool to meet Chavez at ring center. More foreign booth warfare. Chavez bangs the body. Chavez continues to punch. Left hook to the body. Left hook to the head. Duran buckles. Duran buckles. Chavez nailed him with the left to the body, then up to the head. Chavez trying to open up. Duran smothering him. Chavez cannot land cleanly. Chavez continues to bang the body. Chavez backing up Duran, working the body, now a chopping right hand to the head. Chavez keeps Duran pinned to those ropes. Under a minute to go here in round seven. Chavez left hook to the body and brings it quickly up to the head. Chopping right hand also catches Duran. Duran leaning on the ropes, firing away. Right, left, right. Chavez smiles at him. Chavez comes rearing back with a left to the body and a right uppercut. To the head of the Panamanian. It got through Duran's guard. Excellent round for Julio Cesar Chavez. Holy cow. That's what his corner wanted. And that's what Chavez delivered. Duran is now fatigued. He expelled a lot of energy to build up this big lead. And he took a pounding. A pounding in round seven. Duran has taken rounds one and seven. 
I'm sorry, Chavez is taking rounds one and seven. Duran two through six. The ringside scorer gave Chavez a 10-8 round. I could see that. Duran, there's some concern in the, the Duran corner now. The bell for round eight. Can Chavez keep it up? We'll see. Duran looks to end that right there with that shot on the belt line. That should slow up Chavez for the moment. Chavez comes right back with his own shot to the belt line. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Duran, two jabs and a right hand. Duran on the outside now looking to counter. A very aggressive Julio Cesar Chavez. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Both fighters scored. Duran again behind the jab with a 1-2. It was a jab and a right cross. Duran can box. Beautiful feint now. Duran fainted the jab, dug the right to the body. Duran... Beautiful! Two jabs and a right hand! Snapping Chavez's head as he comes forward. Chavez dips under the jab and digs hard to the body with a 1-2. Duran with a lead right and a left hook. Both shots to the head of the Mexican, Julio Cesar Chavez. Good comeback round for a tiring Roberto Duran looking for his second win. We're through 8, scheduled for 15. This is for the lightweight championship of the world. The defending title holder Julio Cesar Chavez is behind in our eyes is behind in the eyes of the ringside scorer round nine both fighters are fatigued both power levels have gone down the bell Duran Chavez both from the outside Duran has that nice jab though good stiff jab and the right cross scores upon Julio Cesar Chavez both fighters throw and miss Chavez gets in with a jab. Duran throws the cross. Chavez blocks it. Duran quickly throws again. Four punch salvo. All to the head of Julio Cesar Chavez. The last one being a right cross. Chavez bores in and shoves Duran away. But it was an excellent scoring combination by the Panamanian Roberto Duran. Duran follows it up. With another jab and a right hand. Excellent job by Duran. Under a minute to go. Duran continues to pump the 1-2 into the face of Chavez. Both fighters fighting from distance. But it's Duran who is able to feint Chavez out of position and land. It's Duran rinse and repeat. Two jabs and a right hand. Chavez backs up for a moment. Duran will not follow. Now Chavez moves forward. He dips and he bangs a 1-2 to the body. A left hook and a right hook. The bell sounds the end of round nine. Another round for Roberto Duran. Juan Lopez has joined us. Hope all is well, Juan. Thank you for joining us. Nine rounds in the book. Books. Nine rounds in the book, excuse me. Both fighters are fatigued, but they are fighting hard. It's Duran out hustling Chavez at the moment. 87-82. Again, this scorecard and my scorecard are unofficial. Round 10, scheduled for 15. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Chavez trying to bring the pressure. Duran boxing beautifully. Chavez gets on the inside. Left hook to the body. Right uppercut to the head of Roberto Duran. Chavez continues to punch. Same combination. Left to the body. Right uppercut to the head of Duran. Duran fires back with a 1-2 to the body. Now slides back to distance. Duran pumps the jab into Chavez's face. Then comes with the cross, snapping the Mexican's head. And that's going to be some blood from the mouth of Julio Cesar Chavez after that fine three-punch salvo by Duran. Duran continues with the jab. Beautiful work by Duran, sending the cross behind it. Chavez tries to get in tight. Bangs the body. 1-2 and then brings the left hook to the head. Under 30 seconds to go in round 10. But he cannot continue the onslaught as Duran comes back with three punches. Left right to the body after he fainted the jab. And then he brings the left hook to the head. Final moments of round 10. Chavez ties up Duran. The referee breaks them. We're going to round 11. We have Duran comfortably ahead 
That was a close round, but we still give it to Duran. Let's see what the ringside score. Ringside score gave it even. So down five on the ringside score. You have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. If Chavez sweeps the final rounds 10, 9, it will be a draw. And that's with a 10-8 round. The ringside score gave a 10-8 round after Chavez had a huge seventh but could not drop Duran. Best round of the fight for the Mexican. Round 11, the bell. Chavez trying to hold on to his title. Duran trying to rip it away. Duran, two jabs, a right hand. Left hook missed to the head, though. Chavez gets inside of the jab, works the body, then brings the right uppercut through the guard of the Panamanian. Chavez continues to mount the attack, left right to the body by Julio Cesar Chavez. Duran having trouble now. His legs are a little slower. Chavez cuts off the ring, throws the right hand. Duran dips away from it. Chavez continues to pin Duran towards the ropes, throwing, but Duran bips and bops and moves away from the ropes. Chavez not landing. Chavez, there it is, there it is. Good shot by Chavez. He fainted the left, came with a right uppercut, and then went one-two to the body. Chavez continues with a two-handed assault upon Duran. Duran not punching. Chavez is another two-handed assault. Four punches get through. Two to the body, two to the head. Julio Cesar Chavez letting his hands go. Duran lands a one-two at the bell. The right cross was grazing by the Panamanian. That round goes solidly in the book for Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez digging very deep now. Let's go to the ringside scorer. They gave that round to Chavez. Round 12. These fatiguing pugilists get off the stool. It's going to be phone booth warfare inside ring center. Both fighters jostling. They're missing their shots. They're smothering one another in ring center. Ooh, Duran goes to the belt line. Duran missed with the shots on the inside. Chavez smothers him, but it's Duran punching. Duran lands an uppercut. It was a left uppercut, then a chopping right hand. They're nose to nose, billy goat to billy goat. Chavez with a 1-2 on the inside. Short shots. Chavez follows those short shots up with a left hook and a right hook into the ribs of Roberto Duran. Duran comes to retaliate. Duran with four punches. Left right to the body, left right to the head. They're hooking on the inside, both these pugilists. Toe to toe shots. They go favoring Duran. He was quicker and crisper in that exchange. Final seconds of round 12. Chavez throws the right hand. Duran rolls with it. The punch did not land. Tight round. Tight round. We give it to Duran. We're coming up on the championship rounds. 13, 14, and 15. The title's at stake. Ringside scorer gave that round to Roberto Duran. We gave it to Roberto Duran. 116 111. We have it 116 110 for Duran. We did not give it. You could give it 10 8. We just didn't give the 10 8 and 7. There was no knockdown, but it was a big round for Chavez. The hard luck round. Round 13. The bell. Toe to toe warfare on the inside. Duran's being first. Big shots by Duran. Duran. Got the angle, rips a left uppercut and a left right to the head. Chavez buckles. Duran looks to follow up. Duran measures with the left, lands the right hand on Chavez's jaw. Duran again measures, and he lands the right, left, right again. Chavez grabs onto Duran. Duran works his hands free. Duran continues to punch. Left uppercut, right hand, left, right to the jaw. Chavez tries to swarm him. Duran spins away. Duran continues to punch. Left, right, uppercut. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange favoring Duran. Chavez, nothing on his punches at the moment. Under a minute to go. Duran lands on the belt line. A huge round for Duran. Chavez trying to come back. Missed with the right. Lands a grazing left uppercut. Duran bangs away to the body, and there's the bell.
big round for Roberto Duran. Could he stop Chavez late? Chavez is far worse the wear. He's got 12 TKO points, which is 1 over 11. So if he gets in trouble in the 13th or 14th, the, the referee might stop this bout. Duran only has 6 TKO points, which is nowhere near his... Well, 3 more to 9. Huge round for Duran. You could give it to him 10-8. A lot of concern in the Mexican's corner. Again, through the interpreter, they're telling Chavez, you need a knockout. Don't hold back. You have six minutes to win. 10-8. They did give the rings. I'm in agreement. 10-8. So uh, well, that evens out the 10-8 round in the seventh. If Duran stands and does not go down, he will take the title. But Duran, you can see it in his eyes. He wants to knock out Chavez. Round 14, six more minutes for Chavez to retain his title, in our opinion. But it's all Roberto Duran. Duran bangs the body and comes to the head. Chavez looks shook up. The referee's looking on. Chavez looks to fire back, and he does with an aggressive four-punch combination. Not a lot on those punches, but he landed. Duran sneers and comes back. Left uppercut, right hand, and another left uppercut. Chavez in trouble again, but Chavez bangs the body. Duran moving in. Chavez throws. Chavez misses. He's dead tired. Duran measuring, measuring. Right hand, left hook to the jaw of Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez bangs back with two shots to the body. Under 30 seconds to go. Chavez ties up Duran. Referee breaks them 19 seconds to go. And there's the bell. Chavez held on for dear life towards the end of round 14. He was in big, big trouble. Three more minutes, three more minutes that Julio Cesar Chavez will be the lightweight champion of the world unless he has the miracle, the knockout of Roberto Duran. Three more minutes for Duran, and he will be world champion. Ringside score, 136 Duran, 128 Chavez. A really impressive performance for the Panamanian, Roberto Duran. Remember, he was our welterweight champion. He was upset by Nino LaRocca of Italy in Rome. Now looks to take the lightweight title, which could parlay him back into a welterweight title shot. Duran does not want to touch gloves. He refuses to touch gloves. He will not touch gloves. And finally, he still will not touch gloves. The referee calls for the bell. Chavez needs a knockout. Chavez banging away. Chavez continues to punch. Chavez again bangs the body and up to the head. Nothing on those punches. They clash heads. Cut under Chavez's left eye. Nothing for Duran. Duran sneers and smiles. He's laughing at Chavez. He's mocking Chavez. He faints. He fires. He misses. Chavez catches him with a left hook to the jaw. And again, Duran shakes his head no. Duran looks to punch. He bangs the body. And now up to the head. 1.16 to go in this bout. Chavez needs to land something big. He is unable to land something big. He's landing, but it's not big. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, even exchange. Under 30 seconds. Chavez, the last charge of the light brigade. Bangs the body and comes up to the head with a four-punch salvo. Final seconds. It's Duran punching at the bell. Landing and that is it roberto duran shoves chavez in the back raises his arms declaring himself the champion of the world and we are in agreement with the great roberto duran ringside score 138 chavez 145 duran unofficially our scorecard is very similar to that we have Duran by a large margin. We await the announcement of the ring announcer. The scorecards are being collected here for the final time at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. The commission is going over the scorecards. Scorecards are now being handed to the ring announcer, 
And here we go. We think it's a unanimous decision. And we're going to hear a new world champion, Roberto Duran. But let's find out. The result is in. It is a unanimous decision. 145-138. 143-139. 144-138. For your winner and new lightweight champion of the world, Roberto Duran. There is a smattering of boos from the Pro Chavez fans here at the Alamo Dome. But Roberto Duran just totally outclassed Julio Cesar Chavez to take his second title. He held the welterweight title. Again, lost it to Nino LaRocca, but now he comes back in play with LaRocca as he holds a chess piece. It's called the lightweight championship of the world. So Roberto Duran is the winner. What we what four fun fights we had here at the Alamo Dome. Jess Willard was a unanimous decision winner over Eric Esch, 197-194, 197-194, 197-194. We started off with the big boys. Salvador Sanchez won a close decision, majority decision. I had it a, I think if I go back and I, I think I had it a draw, I think. Or I had Sanchez by one. I don't remember, I have to go back. It was a close fight. Actually, I think I had Sanchez by... I had Sanchez by one or two, actually. Um, oh, no, maybe I did have it a draw. No, I had it a draw. I remember now because the last judge had it a draw. So Sanchez had it 90, uh, won 96 95, 99 93, and then the other judge, third judge, 95 95. Majority decision Sanchez. As all the close rounds went to Sanchez, I had it a draw. I remember now. As I'm looking at my car, <laughs> flipping through my notes. Oscar De La Hoya easily beat Pepino Cuevas. Again, a pro Cuevas crowd here. De La Hoya had his fair share of fans, a lot of female fans. But De La Hoya won a unanimous decision 99-90, 97-92, 98-92. And Roberto Duran rips away the lightweight championship of the world, providing quite a mugging to Julio Cesar Chavez. 145-138, 143-139, and 144-138. Eight. So a fun fight card. I'm glad everyone was here for it. If you enjoyed it, smack that like button. If you haven't subscribed or you have subscribed, please hit the bell for notification when we go live so you can join us in the chat. And if you're watching later on demand, feel free to leave a comment. We always like to read comments and we reply back to all comments. Also, maybe there's a matchup you'd like to see, and maybe we're able to perform it. We have Glory Days Boxing, we have Legends of Boxing, and we have Title Bout 2. We have a plethora of boxing games. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Stay safe. Be smart. God bless. I greatly appreciate your time. I'd like to thank Warren Chandler, SGJ Jamie, Juan Lopez. Thank you. First time we've seen Juan in the chat. Hopefully you come back. Hopefully you enjoyed it. John Wise was here. After further review with Steve Tower, please check out that wonderful channel. He had um, Soccer Blast up on it tonight. Um, keep scrolling up. Jason Cull, thank you very much. Cutter Historical, another fine content creator in our community. Jack Thompson was here. Steeler Fan 1933, our good friend Mark. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, I'm tired. Our good friend Matt. Mark Jones was here. Dale Cutlass. Uh, Sports Time Machine, Mr. Utah Mike. So check out that wonderful channel, Sports Time Machine. Sox Arizona for our, all your Red Sox and Celtics content you, you'd ever want. And I think we got everybody. So thank you very much. Stay safe, be smart. As I said, treat people that you want to be treated. God bless. I love you all. I'll see you soon. What a fight card. Willard over Esh, unanimous decision. Salvador Sanchez over Alexis Arguello, majority decision. Oscar De La Hoya giving Pepino Cuevas an ass beating, dropping him in the 10th, winning a unanimous decision. And Roberto Duran mugging Julio Cesar Chavez to rip Chavez's lightweight title away. And once again, the Panamanian Roberto Duran is a world champion, this time at lightweight. Bye-bye.